welcome back. So uh, a bit of a surprise, so I'm having an early holiday in Turkey. Um, I've never been to Turkey before, absolutely love it. We're at a lovely resort southwest of Turkey um, and I'm just blown away by the planting here. Um, and I don't know about you, but wherever I go on holiday, I do love to bring either plants back, which I can't do from here, or the ideas and sort of um, put them in my garden scape. And then it always reminds me of my lovely holiday. Um, so what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to, every day, I'll walk around and I'll do a little bit of footage about the lovely planting here. Um, because lots of the areas are just really informal and inspired. So, um, hope you enjoy this little holiday in the sun. So, the closer to the hotel entrance that you get, the more cultivated the land is. You just come in and have a look at some of these beautiful, um, these beautiful plants and these gorgeous little roses. I love this hedging. I don't know what that plant is. It's so cool and soft. It's lovely. And then this is my absolute favourite. Um, again, I shall look on the lap, the app, and I'll put on the name um, of the plant. Really soft, gorgeous, and really amazed at how many roses grow here. Naturalistic, the rose is just in amongst the plants, and then I love that sort of shorter, darker pink one. This is pretty too. And look at this, the just sort of soft undulation, and so it's cultivated, but it's quite natural as well, it's not sort of rigid. The palm, um, the bananas. So we'll go further down now towards the seafront. So I've just been out for a walk and I've spotted this under this gorgeous tree, um, this sort of trench. And I was watching Monty John on a Gardener's World and he said you dig a saucer um, and the water goes into it. Um, and then sits there and soaks down within that saucer or trench and feeds the roots of the tree without it sort of running off um, into the grass. So I'm really tickled that I found that. So I just want to show you this design. This is one of the houses and the accommodation of the One is a lollipop sort of design. But this high when I'm 
transplant in 2008. Now they're massive. I've just lost one earlier this year in the storm. I don't know whether to take the big spiral one down and plant two new ones or cut it down halfway and plant another big one. I, I really don't know. I like your opinion on that. But I think this is beautiful. Just it offers privacy and shade. So, right. Right, so I'm loving these planters that they have. They've got them throughout the hotel. They've got them up by reception as well. So gorgeous, if you can come in close at that. Gorgeous stone there, a little marble top. And then what, about 15 inches wide? So not, not terribly wide, but you can imagine these planters when the, you know, the plants are established and they'll be spilling out. Having said that, I am quite surprised by um, the sort of plants that are planted here. So they've got these ones, which I recognise that as a sort of, we call that a busy lizzy. They've got a begonia, they've got a very, this is a petunia. You know, and they're really struggling. And I love petunias, but I don't grow them in my garden because they're quite high maintenance. If your garden's windy or very sunny, take a lot of watering so um, I'm just wishing I had my trowel and a pallet of plants and I could just go along and fill all these plants because they go right way along absolutely gorgeous and this is their irrigation system for these plants um, which is sort of screaming I'm here at the moment but you can imagine you know they know what they're doing because the rest of the the planting is just so stunning so they will know that these plants will take off and they'll spill off and you'll not see this irrigation system but this is a great idea um, and actually my dad when he was alive built um, a similar kind of thing for my mother um, in the northeast of England well throughout England we call backyards basically areas at the back of a, a terraced house that has no soil it'll have a concrete floor and brick or wooden fencing brick walls or wooden wooden fencing so people grow their plants in tubs in backyards i know in america you call your back your, your gardens your backyards um and he built um very similar to this a raised planter all the way down the yard and then he made it big at one end and he sunk a pond into it it was beautiful so yes i'm i would love one of these in my house so we're right down at the seafront beside the banners here um and i really like this what they've done with this area here because can you imagine how exposed it is here how much upkeep it would take to keep the plant happy and alive. I think it's really inspired what they've done. They've just planted these lovely, sort of stubby little palm trees here. And I think that looks really lovely. These, these little palm trees here, or whatever they are, um, it, I wouldn't have them in my garden. Um, unless I wanted to create a piece of turkey on my front border, in which case I would have maybe some of these and some osteospernum and that. But um, I can appreciate the beauty of them in the right setting. And it just goes back to that right plant, right place, doesn't it? Beautiful. They've done what I like to do in the garden, so every inch of space they've taken up with a plant that is happy in its situation. So all of these um, daisies and osteospernum just have covered the soil at the base of these palm trees. And if they didn't have if they didn't have these plants here, then someone would be weeding constantly um, the water would just evaporate immediately from the top of the soil um, and it would be much higher maintenance area and then you know I mean that could be 
an English border, couldn't it? I could totally have a border like this. So see this shrub, there's been a flower in its heart out already and I mean we're only part way through May, very early in the year. And then look at these gorgeous roses. Aren't they beautiful? I don't know whether they've got a... Oh, that has got a beautiful smell. So they've got yellows and pinks, beautiful white rose. Very Alice in Wonderlandish there, isn't it? It's pure white, it's beautiful. What oh, has got a touch of red on the petal there. So I have had these daisies before in my garden. They sell them all over the place um, in England. But um, now I'll sort of associate them with turkey. And then look at these gorgeous geraniums with the bougainvillea just mixing in. Oh, it's, it's just gorgeous, giving that bit of height. Um, again, red geraniums are my favourite, but it just looks gorgeous. And they've even got my lovely pink ones here. I tell you what feels different about the geraniums here, though, in this setting. The leaves, I know it's very early in the morning, but the leaves feel much tougher than... Um, I love how you get this little white flower inside. That looks like a little face, look. <laughs> Sorry about the chip nails, everyone. I've been in the pool a lot. <laughs> um, so two little eyes and a nose. <laughs> it's lovely. Looks like a Muppet, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, I just love it. Just looking at these Anything with um, silver foliage is drought tolerant. There are hundreds of bees on this. And I'm pretty sure this, I've got one of these in a pot um, outside my side door. They're just loving that. And then if you have a look down here, I just absolutely love this. So these little daisies here, they open out pink and then they turn white. And they're all over and they've got this sort of feathery foliage. I have that in my garden as well. So there's a gorgeous smell around here and I've found the sauce and it's this and um, it's Japanese honeysuckle. And if you look along this, this one stem, you've got yellow flowers and white flowers. Oh, it's just gorgeous. Um, and I've discovered this fantastic app um, and I'll put the link below. Um, it's called Seek and you just point your phone towards the flower and it will tell you the genus that the flower belongs to, the plant belongs to, um, and then it goes into even more detail. So it tells you, it gives you a little map, it shows you where it's from in the world. Um, it's wonderful, I'll put the link below. Look at this tree. Again, pardon my ignorance, I have no idea what, what tree that is. But um, I will find out and I'll put the name on it if I possibly can. And I've just spotted something over here. Isn't that gorgeous? I have never seen an orange tree. These are olive trees. Um, so happy here. And they've planted, oh, I don't know how many. Calculate it. Well, I'll calculate it before I come home. But this is just going to be a fabulous olive grove. 
Um, I don't know if anybody knows how long olive trees take to grow. But this is going to be fabulous. And this, they've got the sprinklers on this morning and that's the only sprinklers I've seen in the whole week that we've been here. They have got an irrigation system um, because you can see it right near the entrance to the hotel. For some reason, they've got planters and it looks to me like a petunia, um, which I would have thought would be very high maintenance in these temperatures. That's why I don't grow them in my garden. It's windy um, and they dry out and they're just, they're always wilting. So anyway, um, they don't look particularly good. The window boxes where they've got, they're full of geraniums and or pelagoniums. I don't know what to call those because we've got to call them geraniums for hundreds of years. Uh, we've always called them geraniums. Um, and now it's like, oh no, they're not a geranium, they're a pelagonium. So I'm just going to call them geraniums. And you all know that I know that they're really pelagoniums now. So this is a very, very clever area here. So it's also very beautiful. So we've got lovely palm trees. We've got lovely blossom trees. I don't know whether you can see this gorgeous pink blossom. Like a Obviously, um, I would love it if you, anyone out there can tell me what these trees are. Um, and I do have um, a Turkish subscriber, so we communicate by, well I put it through Google Translator. Um, so they will know what these trees are. Right, this area here is really interesting because we're sort of upper level here. And if you can see these sort of beehive things here, they are actually air vents because I'm standing on top of some of the accommodation, um, the front of which looks out onto the sea. But they've just sort of built them into the landscape so they'll be lovely and cool um, and then camouflage it by making a roof garden right the way along. Sort of repetition of the, the big cactus like that. And I'm not a lover of these, but again I'm getting a new appreciation seeing them in their in their rightful context. architectural structure. I love the colour. Now we're down beside the seafront and um, this plant here, which I've looked on the app and it's called Sea Fig, um, is everywhere. It just grows wild. Um, and the further away from the hotel itself and the accommodation we get, the more naturalistic the planting is, which I love because um, they haven't tried to constrain it by stuffing these plants into, um, I don't know, troughs or um, hanging baskets or anything. And just look at it. And when later in the day, these flowers just all open up, you can see them start to open up here. They're tight closed here. And then they all open up, and this is just a sea of colour. So I hope you've enjoyed the video, um, I certainly enjoyed making it, 
I've had a lovely holiday and um, I'll see you back home in England. Bye.